Good afternoon, friends. You are listening to Full Toss on Radio Dil, online Radio Dil dot com for iPhone downloads, free application known as Radio Dil. You can also listen to us on your regular phones. Dial in the number four zero eight four one eight five thousand. Once again, that is four zero eight four one eight five thousand for Android phones. Application known as Tune Radio. Phone number in the studio is seven three two eight hundred one. Zero zero eight. Once again, that is seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight. आप सुन रहे हैं रेडियो दिल, दिल से, दिल तक. Today is August eleventh. Time in the studio is two o five. This is your host Amit. Would like to welcome all the listeners and above all, Amanat. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you very much, Amit. It's a beautiful day in New Jersey. Great for cricket as usual. And you are pumped up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> rightly so. Rightly so. Amanat. Uh, for last we a uh, few days of rain. Finally, we have some sunshine here in. That is in New Jersey. Yeah, that's why I said it's a great day. Indeed, sir, and a lot of action is happening. Yes, internationally as well as locally. Yes, it is the peak season, if I can call it. Indeed, indeed, and uh, summer being here now, domestic cricket in the United States is budding up day by day, uh, leaps and bounds. They are growing like anything else. Yes, and I, it, I can see so many fields. Yes, cricket yes, happening yes, 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 yes. all the time. And uh, there's not a single ground in any township where I don't see cricket happening. Over the over the past one month, Amanat, we have been giving extensive coverage to our uh, local teams. We'll continue doing that this season. Yes, we should. I and uh, we also have a mixture of international news as well. Okay. A couple of good series are still happening right now. Yes. One of the series just got concluded, and uh, this is this is how I propose we'll do our our we'll start our show today, Amanat. Uh, With our domestic cricket, we also have some international uh, fixtures as well. I know Amanat has uh, uh, his uh, fundamental analysis for the last T20 that was played between India and Sri Lanka when uh, where India won that match. Yes, absolutely. So Amanat is going to talk about that. We also have to talk about England and South Africa. Yes, lot of news is coming from there. Speculations. Not so. Not not. Uh, we don't know. We we a lot of uh, news, both on and off the field. Let I me think, put it that way. I think yes, on the field, but uh, uh, it it it's, it looks like off the field, <laughs> the lives the lives are much more busier for the players now. Yes, it is. especially for the English camp. Anyway, yes. well, we'll talk about that. We'll we'll get to that. Uh, I mean, also we have the under nineteen World Cup that is going on. Yes, and uh, some of the uh, these youngsters are amazing. They they are the future. Uh, yes, indeed. They are yes, the future. Indeed. So uh, it'll be quite interesting to see how many turn out to be superstars. The next series coming up is uh, New Zealand versus India. In, uh, New Zealand will be visiting India. Yes, they'll be playing a couple next of week, test matches. Next week, in fact, next week mm-hmm. they'll be playing a couple of test matches and a few T uh, Twenties before mm-hmm. before the World Cup T Twenty takes place in Sri Lanka. We have the team formation. We have the team selections. We'll talk about that. Uh, okay. Two comebacks in the Indian squad. We'll talk about those two individuals, Amarna. Okay. I have uh, this day in history for us today. This day in cricket segment. A uh, few did you knows that most probably I'll couple it up with uh, our segment on on the headlines. Okay. And then uh, obviously we'll talk about some of the matches took place uh, domestically uh, for our leagues here in, in New Jersey. Uh, what what I propose we'll do, Amanat. First half we'll talk about one match, and the second half we'll talk about the other match. Okay. For two different leagues. So without getting too much into it, Amanat. Uh, also, SPCL has started. The Sri Lankan uh, uh, SLPL, the Sri Lankan Premier League. Yes. Excuse me there. And uh, here's a scorecard, uh, real quickly, before we uh, uh, move on to other other topics as well. Sri Lankan Premier League, which is uh, you know talked about, went through some controversies. Finally, they are playing a match, and uh, uh, all the teams have been snapped up by Indian corporate houses. Uh, all, all of them. All, all of them. All eight or nine of them. Eight or nine of them. All Indian corporate houses have uh, purchased those teams. Some uh, Yes. Now, excuse my. Uh, uh, I know I'm going to butcher some of the names here, so I will require some assistance from you here, Amanat. Go ahead, if you can. Uh, uh, ba- ba- Basnihara Cricket Club. Basnihara, yes. Uh, Dundee versus uh, Kandu- Kandurata Warriors. Kandurata. Kandurata Warriors. Mm-hmm. Now for uh, Basnihara uh, uh, Cricket D- Dundee Club, you have uh, uh, Smith who's uh, opened up the batting for them. And I'm talking about Daniel Smith mm-hmm. along with Tilak Ratne Dilshan, mm-hmm. who, by the way, is not out at 66, Amanat. He yes. had a horrendous uh, season, uh, uh, opening season with, uh, with, uh, when, when India visited Sri Lanka just recently. True, but uh, coming back to T20s, he's true to his form. 
and um, so let's see how how this uh, leak shapes up, Avanath. This is uh, just the beginning. Yes, it's important that all also, the also. I'm sorry. Also, uh, some of the players from Pakistan are also participating in this league. Yes, but for the Indian t- uh, squad. Other uh, countries are playing and I think it is worthwhile. It may not be the Indian Premier League, but I think these are all stepping uh, stones for other leagues to shine and for new players to be thrown into the mix. And yes, I agree. I agree with some of the experts. Uh, too much of cricket is being played these days. Uh, I do agree to them at, uh, to an extent. At the same time, um, I think this also gives selectors a chance for rotation. Yes, bringing up the the new player the newer players yes. giving them an opportunity to perform and uh, but we'll, we'll we'll discuss that in uh, in future also Marat. but before uh, let's get into india and sri lanka the recently concluded series okay go ahead where we all know india won the series very comfortably 4-1 yes we, we covered it last we time we covered that last time uh, after last week's show uh, India also won the T20 match yes. against uh, Sri Lanka and some and some really good performances, Amanad, from Virat Kohli, Suresh Raina. Most importantly, an individual that we talk about all the time. After a long gap, he's gotten a chance and he proved his worth. And I'm talking about Irfan Pathan. He did very well in the ODIs. He did really well in the ODIs. In fact, his economy rate and his wickets were uh, much more better than uh, Zahir Khan. Yes. And uh, true to his form, he used the conditions really well for the T20 when he snapped three quick wickets and three very good wickets. He has done very well in the ODI. He has done very well in the T20. What remains, as someone had mentioned, is his performance in test matches because he can swing the ball. In his good days, in the if you remember the 2003-2004 series in Australia when he made his debut, he was able to swing the ball and he was being hailed as a future Akram, which was very unfortunate. Here's so, what Duncan Fletcher had to say about him after the match. Oh, go ahead. This is what Duncan Fletcher said that he is he is really happy and ecstatic that uh, Patan has done so well. In Sri Lanka, hmm. he goes. The real test will be how Patan performs back home now in India. In India, on Indian soil and on Indian pitches. That is similar to the. Pitches. That is similar, but at the same time, different different venues. Uh, for example, Ahmed- Ahmedabad. Yes. One of the uh, tests will be will be played there. Eden Gardens will be hosting another test. Bangalore will be hold, I think hold, uh, hosting a test also. Yes. So let's see how Patan performs has, there. Has Patan made it to the Indian Test team? I will. We'll see that right now when we okay. cover the squad. I'll let you know. But uh, some of the names, um, you know what, before I'm, I think that's a little too far off. Uh, far off right now. Let's talk about the T20 that was played between Sri Lanka and India. Go ahead. And your fundamental analysis. We'll take a look at how things shaped up from there. Okay. And I know uh, for uh, this T20, Tiwari was also included. Uh, Rohit Sharma was there too, and I, I still um, question his selection. I, I have been questioning his selection, Amanath. For quite some time. For a very long time. I think, but in this match, he didn't get the chance to bat. He did not get a chance to bat. Uh, I agree. I, I, I completely agree with you on that one. But uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I still hold my ground, Amanath, on this one that Sharma has have gotten enough opportunities to show his medal, uh, it doesn't look like he's the kind of a person who uh, who can perform for the masses. See, uh, the very fact that he has got so many chances means somebody high up believes in his uh, uh, capacity to deliver. But he has not delivered. And uh, as, as On the contrary, Amanath, he does really well on domestic front. Well, he has to go back to domestic and score uh, six centuries in the next season to come back into the reckoning. He does that. He does that. But what happens when he comes to the squad, Indian squad again? Uh, well, uh, he can get one more chance, but he has to show that he uh, he can still keep scoring consistently. Now, uh, you want me to read the score of... Uh, yes, sh- please. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, see, India... Uh, uh, Sri Lanka won the toss and put India into bat. And India had a uh, poor start when Gambir was bowled by Ranga for only six. Oh, it was a beautiful delivery, Amanda. I watched that delivery, by yes. the way. But Rahane and Kohli gave a good, a good partnership of nearly uh, 74 runs. And they brought it up to 81. When Rahane got out for 21, uh, he, sco- he was rotating the strike. By the way, Ranga is a pretty good bowler, Amanath. Yeah, I really yes. enjoyed his bowling that yes. day. <laughs> I think he's, he's a very quick bowler. He used the conditions really well, just like Pathan did. 
Yes, I think uh, uh, Sri Lanka is uh, throwing up new players into the Especially mix. Especially the way he was swinging the ball both the ways. He was angling the ball into the batsman. <laughs> I think that is more important. Yes. Angling it very nicely. And he was doing a superb job at that. Yes. And uh, so th- luckily Rahane, Kohli, Raina and also Dhoni to some extent, they all scored on a slightly sl- slower pitch. They managed to score 155. And I felt for a subcontinental wicket, 155 was not a big total, was not a very defendable total. But going by what the analysts were telling that this was a slow pitch and it was quite defendable, that's what the reading was. And guess what? Pathan uh, opened the bowling along with Umesh Yadav and uh, he turned the fortunes for India around. Very quickly, he took three wickets. He got Dilshan out for a duck, got Taranga out for five, and most important, got uh, Jayawardene LBW. By the way, that decision was contemplated. But Which one? Uh, Dil- uh, Jayawardene's decision. LBW. LBW. I think I, when I looked at it also, to me, it felt like that it, the ball did hit him higher Above the knee, uh, above the knee, knee, knee roll. Yes. If, if you if if you saw the side the side views, mm. it clearly showed that it hit him above the knee. Mm. But I think. Uh, but Hawkeye, Hawkeye suggested it would clip the stumps. It would clip, clip the stumps. So uh, the, finally, it's it's an umpire's call, and uh, unless it is blatantly wrong, you cannot uh, say he made a blunder. His decision, it, it's a marginal call, and he was right. <laughs> the ball was swinging, Amanat, to yes. his to, in his defence. Yes, but uh, anyway. I'll tell you this much. No batsman is ever happy with the LBW decision. <laughs> I agree. Okay. No batsman. No batsman. I agree with and, you. And, uh, Including myself. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're, we're all behind you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, with three wickets qu- uh, quickly do- uh, down at 35, uh, Sri Lanka had their work cut out for them. And to some extent, uh, Tirumane and Matthews, uh, did a good rebuilding job, but they couldn't keep it up. They kept lo- losing wickets. At the regular interval. At regular intervals, and they were all out for about 116. And if you, if you want, I'll give you the fundamental an- analysis. And it was very interesting to see how their chase unfolded. Let's look into that, Amanat. Okay. Given they had to chase, uh, Sri Lanka had to chase 156 in 20 overs. 120 balls on in one pocket. In the other pocket, you have got 10 wickets. You have to balance 120 deliveries and 10 balls to score 156 runs. So you, you've got a double barrel gun <laughs> to shoot 156 runs. And you better not make sure any barrel finishes. And guess what? Uh, let, let us roll the tape to the 7th over. Okay? At the 7th over... They had, uh, Sri Lanka had managed to score 56 runs. So they were close to, uh, 56 for three. They lost three wickets, but they had managed to score 56. Though they lost wickets, at least their run scoring rate was pretty good, pretty effective. And at that rate, I would say the match was evenly poised. At the e- end, even after losing so many wickets. Uh, but they had scored more runs. They had scored uh, at eight runs per over. You have less resources in your pocket. But mm. at the same time, you're keeping the scorecard ticking. Uh, exactly. Uh, you're, uh, you're compensating for the loss of wickets by at least scoring a lot of runs. So that was, at that stage, evenly poised. Now, let's roll the tape forward to the 13th over. That's almost two-thirds of the chases over. Correct. And at, uh, at the 13th over... They had scored only 96 for 5. From 56, their scoring rate dipped down. This is the time when Dhoni introduced a fifth baller combination of Raina and Rohit. Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, Virat and Rohit. And you have to also remember the fielding restrictions come into play. Correct. Right? And so at that stage, it's very important to score runs and not to lose wickets. They did lose two wickets and they couldn't score runs. So that made a big difference for uh, Sri Lanka. At 96 for 5, the uh, odds were against Sri Lanka winning. They had only a 45% chance at that stage uh, by my uh, cricket analytics model. And from there, it was all downhill. From 96 for 5, they became 101 for 6, 104 for 7. As the pressure builds up, they were losing wickets as well. Dinda capitalized on those opportunities, I mean, I, Yes. Oh, Dinda cleaned he, up the tail. When, when he took three quick wickets in that, in that, fi- in, in that uh, final over of his. Yes. So that, that, that's where once they lost the initiative uh, at 96 for five, they couldn't get it back. I think also when Pathan's last over, he, he almost had that fourth wicket when Umesh Yadav mm. dropped that catch. Uh, yes. Long out. <laughs> I thought that was something uh, he, he should have 
See, our well, anyway, should have, could have. You know, it's, uh, a person is always wise after the decision. That is true. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, it was an all-round performance from almost everybody. Yes, uh, I would say the fact that India managed to score one fifty-five for three was and a, could defend it and could defend it very comfortably. Very comfortably, it was defended. Uh, they took all the ten wickets. That's a in a twenty twenty match. If you take all the ten wickets, means every two hours you are getting a wicket at least. That's a very important statistic. And attack is the best form of defense. When you take wickets, you put the batting team on the defensive. Amanat, thank you very much for that excellent fundamental analysis, and I look forward to reading that on our blog, fulltosscricket dot com, when you upload it soon. Yes, and uh, 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 I'll annotate our YouTube. Uh, yes, thank uh, you. Channel appropriately. Uh, friends, you are listening to Full Toss. This is your host Amit. Along with Amanat on Radio Dil, online Radio Dil dot com. Phone number in the studios is seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight seven three two eight hundred one zero zero eight. आप सुन रहे हैं Radio Dil दिल से दिल तक. Some of the positives that came across came out of this particular T Twenty and also the series is uh, I was really impressed with the fielding of Team India. They were electrifying in the field, especially the T20 that I saw with Tiwari, Raina, Virat Kohli, even um, even for that matter, uh, uh, fact, Sharma, Gambhir. Everybody was on their toes. Yeah, see, some of the runouts that were, uh, especially the runout by uh, Tiwari. I will credit uh, Duncan Fletcher for this. Even even I do. Even I do. See, Fletcher always put a lot of emphasis on fielding. That's what he did with England also. Remember yeah, that. See, he's from Zimbabwe, and they know that uh, for them to have any chance against the big teams, it's only by fielding. They were they were never a great batting or bowling side, but they, Zimbabwe is always well known for their fielding, and their out cricket. If I can use that uh, old Certainly term, you can. So their out cricket was always outstanding, and that's what Fl- Fletcher is rubbing it off. So I have to say, the third tour for F- Fletcher, uh, Fletcher is uh, proving to be lucky after uh, the disaster in England and Australia, sh- beating Sh- Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka four one, and also in the T Twenty comfortably. I think uh, they have uh, he has got something to be proud of, especially with the la- young lads he had. And he d- didn't have, uh, they didn't have Sehwag or Zahir Khan for the T20. Had a bunch of youngsters, and yet they delivered. Now, Manat, we'll move on to the selection of uh, Team India for New Zealand. Go ahead. Some of uh, the selections, uh, I think, it will surprise you a little bit. Okay. To an extent, I really want to see your reaction. Okay. Uh, I know it's been talked about replacing Rahul Dravid, and we also said that I think it's it's something you can't replace. Absolutely. At the same time, Amanat, I like what Gautam Gambhir had to say uh, other, uh, just a few days ago at a press conference when he was uh, put on the spot mm. by by the journalist, and they asked him that you know how does he feel now that he's been appointed as a vice captain for the T20 World Cup? Mm. How does it affect you? And his response was pretty good. I was impressed by it. He goes, "I'm not in the team for being you know uh, for the designation. I'm in the team to score more runs and make sure my country wins." Absolutely. And his response was pretty straightforward. He was also asked about Dravid. Um, you know who's going to replace him. I also liked what he had to say, Amanat. Okay. This is what Gambhir had to say. Say what happened before that, when some of the legends retired, <laughs> the the team continued, and that's how the nature of this game is. True. And uh, Cheteshwar Pujara has your, gotten a nod, Amanat. Yeah, your, your your boy. <laughs> absolutely, sir. Absolutely. And I just hope I hope he 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 uses this opportunity really well. He has been doing really well on domestic front. Uh, he's been f- uh, his uh, touch word is fit now. That is a, that was his, the biggest question mark for Pujara. He f- uh, broke a knee or hurt himself somewhere. Yes, but he played very well in that uh, A tour to West Indies. And that's exactly precisely why he has gotten an order. I think he should be in the uh, test team. He is in the test team. Uh, he should be in the test team. He's he, in the test team. Uh, he's in the uh, so uh, he should be in the final playing eleven. And uh, also. Uh, uh, some some of the names that are surfacing now, mm. and again I'm a little ahead, Amanat, on this one. But let me just finish the New Zealand side of it. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, go for the squad for uh, uh, New Zealand and and India. By the way, Daniel Vittori has been uh, called off the series. I think he's not. Uh, uh, he's not. He's not keeping well, Amanat. Then Patel has uh, replaced uh, Jitan Patel has uh, replaced him. Yes. Uh, now he suffered uh, a groin injury. He meaning uh, Daniel Vittori. Mm. In the, in the series against West Indies, where uh, you know the Kiwis received a lot of beating, Amanat. I mean, yes, the West Indians took them to cleaners. 
they lost the series as i predicted by five, by five wickets they lost the second test and B- before we signed off last week yes 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 you said that amana uh, they'll be losing by yeah, five wickets yeah, yeah i remember you said that but of course i i got it wrong with respect to gail gail was not the force it was uh, chandrapal 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 took them chandrapal took them amanath uh, some of the names are as, as as i mentioned cheteshwar pujara was going to be definitely included in the in the series and i think it's, it's let's see let's see how india does i think after a long time you'll uh, will witness uh, some of the matches being played in india i think it's going to be a welcome sign the first test will begin on august 23rd yes uh, that uh, that will uh, be played at hyderabad 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 that's the first test second test uh, against new zealand will be played at uh, your home stadium amanath bangalore bangalore okay. chinnaswamy and uh, this is this is these are the fixtures that we have and uh, yes it's been a long time india has played test at home it will be a test for the team for both the teams amanath new zealand has uh, they have had a horrendous uh, uh, tour so far not only uh, against uh, west indies but even prior to that so they will be looking to uh, save their pride and uh, team india will be looking to uh see you know they can do some damage control what's been happening for last one year after after they lost eight consecutive test matches well eight is better than losing 17 at one time in the 60s india lost uh, uh, 17 uh, test matches yeah i remember you mentioning that to me manat uh-huh. so the and then the uh, the the first t20 uh, versus new zealand will be played at visakhapatnam that's on september the 8th yes second t20 will be played uh, at uh, chepok Okay. Uh, the uh, the MH Ramaram Stadium in Chennai that's on September 11th Abanath so this is the schedule for India and New Zealand before they move on to Sri Lanka for uh, the T20 World Cup and for the T20 World Cup here are some of the names some of the names that surfaced Yuvraj Singh has been included in the surprised. squad surprise i'm very surprised Harbhajan Singh makes a comeback that i'm not surprised i've been Piyush Chawla makes a comeback I now this is what I want to talk to you about about Piyush Chawla's inclusion I mean especially in the Sri Lankan conditions. Yes. He's been quoted he's been um, labeled as being a, a lucky mascot. That's that's how people always <laughs> sit about it. I, I, I think he was there in the World Cup yes, am I right? Indeed, that's yes indeed that's precisely uh, I tell you uh, somebody doing jadu tona here. <laughs> <laughs> jadu tona man come on. <laughs> now, on a serious note I really wanted to hear about your <laughs> I want to see your reaction about Piyush Chawla's inclusion in the team. he he's a he's a good cricketer but i'm and he's quite uh, a good fighter real in the t20s and the ipl he has had a good series but whether i'll play him in the indian team i'll use him only as a backup as a backup i'll use him in in case somebody gets injured okay uh, otherwise i'll go with the other players and i'm i'm surprised they, they, they didn't uh, have they uh, taken oja i don't think so i don't think so I don't prefer Oja. I don't know why they don't take Oja. A, a left-arm spinner has his own advantage. But well, you've got Harbhajan and Ashwin. I think these two are your two strike uh, spinners. I'm really happy to see Harbhajan back in the team. It's it's been a long time we have seen Bhaji after the World Cup. We haven't seen them at all. Yes, it's been a year since he has it's been out. A, yes, yes, it's been a year. So I think it's going to be really good to see, and it will also be uh, a test for Harbhajan to see you know how he. Well, you know he's played enough cricket, Amanath. I don't doubt his uh, temperament. Absolutely, I think, I think he does play for masses. He loves being the uh, center of attention. Yes, uh, see, he has got the experience. At this stage, I would like to rather have him uh, bowl uh, a crucial over than anybody else. Absolutely, sir. Well, I'm not. We'll uh, now move on to about this day in cricket segment. This day in cricket. Okay. Now, this is what happened. This day in cricket, August eleventh, eighteen eighty four. August 11th 1884. Okay. First double century stand in test cricket Amanath. First double century stand. McDonnell were and Murdoch 207 for Australia. Yes. And these Aussies are there everywhere. Yes, yes, yes. They, they scored the first century in test cricket. Very true. Uh, and the first double century First double double century, century stand. Stand partnership. Also August 11th 1909. 1909 must be in England, I'm sure. First to get Uh, twin turns in a test Warren Bradsley 136 Oh Warren ba- ba- Bradsley he was a very great batsman for England England yes uh, 136 and 130 in, in both innings Warren Bradsley Warren Bradsley not Bradsley Bradsley you're Bradsley, right Bradsley you're right he's a left-handed bat Correct uh, all uh, my old days of reading up <laughs> Well it's it's coming right back on up uh, Also August 11 1989 August 11 1989 okay uh, Australian pair uh, complete 329 opening stand versus England Jeff Marsh and Mark Taylor Yes I think uh, that was uh, uh, quite recent no, not 1884 1989 1989 
Also, another Australian makes a new uh, makes a headline for today. August eleventh, nineteen August eleventh, two thousand and five. August eleventh, two thousand five. Oh, the Ponting series. Yeah. Six hundred Test wicket for Shane Warne. Marcus Trescotic. Marcus Trescotic. Yes. He was a vic- he was a six hundred victim. I'm gonna test victim Warren. for okay. Shane Warne. We'll move on to the birthdays. Okay. Here. Born August eleventh, eighteen fifty five. 1855. If that means he must be playing around 1880 or so. Yes, yes, indeed. 18, you are yeah, precisely right. Uh, but uh, uh, pass. He passed away uh, in 1993. An Australian cricketer, John Hodges. John Hodges. Uh, okay, he must have played in the first uh, test for. He did. In 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 in, uh, in, in, in test matches. Correct. 1877. Correct. Mm. Also born August 11, 1870. 1870. English cricket fast bowler of 1893 and 98. Uh, five years. Um, Tom Richardson. Tom Richardson. Yes, he has taken about eighty and odd wickets. Uh, he had a phenomenal uh, record. Kudos uh, to you, my friend. Uh, but uh, his problem was, I remember, I read, read in Wisden Almanac, he became too fat. <laughs> he, uh, he his bowling fell off when he put on weight. But for five years, eighteen ninety three to eighteen ninety in the eighteen nineties, he was the dominant fast bowler of his times. Mm. Also, Tom, Tom Richardson. Tom Richardson, mm. also born August eleventh, eighteen ninety-two, West Indian cricketer. He passed away in nineteen fifty-seven. Archie Willis. Archie Willis, eighteen ninety. Okay, so he must have played in the nineteen thirty. Correct. Also born August eleventh, nineteen o seven, Australian Test player Ted Abacket. A uh, apostrophe is Beckett. Ted, Ted Abacket doesn't ring a bell. Born August eleventh, nineteen ten. New Zealand cricket all-rounder, uh, 1937 English tour that he toured that time is uh, Dennis Maloney. Dennis Maloney doesn't ring a bell. Also born July, uh, August 11th, 1954. 1954. Uh, that means he must have played around 79. Yes, 78, 79. 78, Indian leg spinner all-rounder. Oh, that I know. Uh, leg spinner all-rounder, 78, 79. Narsimha Rao. Absolutely right. <laughs> Narsimha Rao. MB uh, Narsimha Rao. Uh, uh, Gavaskar gave him the chance. <laughs> Gavaskar gave him the chance, but he didn't do much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Narsimha Rao used to be called uh, Babji. That was Bob his pet G. name. MB Narsimha Rao. <laughs> But, uh, because uh, congratulations, uh, Arunar. They tried to uh, bring him as a substitute for Chandrasekhar, who was waning out, but didn't work out. He didn't uh, d- deliver. Just he, a quick reminder for our listeners. I don't share this list with Amana. <laughs> He doesn't know what I'll be talking Anna. about. Okay. Also, August eleventh, nineteen fifty-four. When he said leg spinner, uh, all rounder, the, I, uh, that was the clue. If in, uh, I didn't have an, uh, b- before that, I didn't know. But once he said leg spinner, all rounder, I knew that. August eleventh, born August eleventh, nineteen fifty-four. Same uh, birthday. Okay. Indian right-handed batsman of early 80s Yashpal Sharma. Yes, yes, World Cup hero. World Cup hero. How can we not know uh, Yashpal Sharma? He was also a great player. Uh, he was one of the most grittiest uh, Indian batsmen I've seen. Also born August 11th, 1962. 1962. A Sri Lankan ODI bowler in the mid 1980s is Yuvesh Karnayan. No, doesn't ring a bell. Born August 11th, 1974. Women's cricket now. 1974. Women's cricket. Oh, Anju Jain. Anju Jain. Anju Jain. She's celebrating her birthday today. As well. Happy birthday to her. <laughs> And Amanath will quickly move on to the obituaries. Passed away August eleventh, nineteen sixty-five. Is Bill Woodfall a cricketer? Oh, Bill Woodfall. He was an Australian captain. Yes, thirty-five tests for Australia. He yeah, yeah. He he captained Australia in the Borderline series. Yes, indeed, sir. Uh, Bill Woodfall. Uh, also passed away August eleventh, nineteen seventy-four. He's played three tests for Australia between nineteen fifty-three and nineteen fifty-five. Is Jack Hill. Jack Hill. Okay. Passed away August eleventh, nineteen ninety nine. Okay. So played two tests for India between nineteen seventy two and nineteen seventy three. Okay. Ramanath Parker. Yeah, uh, Ramanath Parker of uh, Bombay. Yes. Uh, uh, of, he was, yeah, he uh, played for Bombay. Uh, played for Bombay. He, I, I remember that name very well. Well, friends, that was our this day in cricket segment. Okay. And uh, <laughs> once again, Ramanath. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading that for you. Okay. <laughs> some, uh, I think you got uh, a lot of them right. Yeah, but uh, see, there has been some hook to that player uh, uh, by which I can identify him. Well, friends, you, Manat, uh, we'll go ahead and take a short drinks break. When we do come back, we still have to discuss our domestic cricket. Yes. I still have to talk about a little bit about uh, England and South Africa, Manat. I think it's worth mentioning some of the things that are happening, mm. and also for the third test, uh, uh, I think South Africa uh, they they are they are doing so well. And they are challenging uh, the English team on their home turf. 
on their home turf. I think this is going to be a really, really good test. I have already enjoyed the the, the last previous test, and I've been enjoying talking about it with you. Yes, yes, it's a make or break series. So, and uh, before before England tours other countries, I think this is going to be very crucial for them. Yes, and also given the fact that there's a lot of uh, activity bo- both on and off the field, it should be interesting. I think in, I think in today's segment we'll talk about off-field antiques for English some of the English players. <laughs> okay, and you know who I'm going to be talking about. Absolutely. Stay tuned, friends. We'll be right back after these short messages from our sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back, friends. As promised, it was indeed a pretty short drinks break. Welcome back, friends, uh, for our broadcast, Full Toss. This is your host, Amit, along with Amanad on Radio Dil, online, radiodil.com, phone in the studios, 732-800-1008. We're also on YouTube, Amanad. Uh, YouTube channel, Full Toss Cricket. Full Toss Cricket. And uh, listeners can also follow us on Twitter with the tagline. Full Toss Cricket, once and, again. And those of, us, those of our listeners who follow us, follow our blog extensively, that is fulltosscricket.com. Yes. And Amanat, I think we do have a caller. Let me go ahead and take this call. Okay, go ahead. Radio Dale, you're live on air. Your name and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Skanda from Dayton, New Jersey. Hi, Skanda. Thank you so much for calling our broadcast. Please go ahead. Sure. Um, I've had a few thoughts about um, Rohit Sharma. I know a lot of Indian fans have been very quick to pile on to him. I, I'm, I, I'm one of them. I'm one of them, Skanda. Yeah, I have, yeah, but I've been talking about him for uh, for past uh, so many months, I think. But go ahead. I, I, know, hear, I, I want to hear your point of view also. So I, I'm, I think I'm with everyone in saying that I think he should probably be dropped uh, for the ODI squad. But I think everyone's very quick to say that uh, he has no talent or well, well, there's nothing all along. But Think about the Asia Cup against Pakistan. He played a very good innings there. He played some incredible shots against Ajmal when he was at his best. Um, he, ha- he clearly has certain abilities that I don't think any of the other younger players have. Skanda, um, I do agree to you. Much. I do agree to you. I do not doubt his talent. What I, what I don't like about him is he doesn't use his talent at the given opportunity. At that level, sure, but, your, temp- your temperament but has to be there. That, that, that's true, but at the same time, in terms of opportunities, where have the opportunities come? They've come mainly in ODIs and T20s. He's not had a test debut yet. Correct. Um, I agree with you. He's, he's kind of, now he's benefiting, I think Manjrekar mentioned this um, on Cricket Info, how he is now benefiting yes, from I read that. In, the, in the border Alaska series where um, Dhoni is very stubborn to pick Kohli all the time, and now he's equally stubborn to keep Sharma on the team. Um, I'm a bigger fan of rotation policy, but I think... Sharma still is worth pursuing with. I think that's the one thing that everyone seems to say, that he has no talent. Um, at the same time, how many other Indian players now have a very good pull shot? I mean, <laughs> very few are, are even able to deal with a short ball. Think about Sunil Shraina. For all his attitude, um, all of his uh, uh, fielding abilities, he still struggles against short ball. He still is going to struggle in foreign conditions. Whereas, at least with um, Rohit Sharma, I have some confidence there. So, so let us see. Point, uh, and then as far as Duncan Fletcher goes, I don't think this is enough to at least start saying it's a, something to be proud of. Um, this is Sri Lanka, I guess a side that's very weak. I mean, Sri Lanka is still recovering from losing Murli. Um, Malinga is on the <laughs> So I, I, I don't think this is like, think of all the bad feeling that was going on in Australia, in England. Um, Some of us haven't gotten over that it's come yet. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I don't see... This is something of an achievement in any sense. It's maybe part of the rebuilding phase. This is in the subcontinent, though. These aren't dead wickets. I'm, I'm, I'm still very pessimistic about India's chances of rising again. Skanda, so. I'm going to put you on spot here, okay? You sure. don't. You, you sound like you have been born and brought up here. Am I right or not? <laughs> yes. And but your knowledge about cricket is, is, is uh, I have to say, impressive. Right, thank you. So you ha- do you follow cricket extensively? I mean, you have to because if you're talking about Rohit Sharma and his techniques and Duncan Fletcher, that means you must be following cricket regularly. Yes, I do. Um, and uh, runs in the family. Uh, absolutely, so. sir. Absolutely. And also, uh, uh, since you talked about Rohit Sharma, I, I, I'm not sure if you had a chance to listen to some of the other players that we talked about earlier in the show, especially Virat Kohli and now with the T20 inclusion of Yuvraj Singh and Harbhajan Singh. What are, what are your views about both these players? So... I mean, I, I guess I, we don't know how good Yuvraj Singh will be, right? He's he's coming back. He's not played any matches beforehand. Sure. So it's kind of a big mystery. I'm not even sure if he's going to play any matches. And maybe he might just be there as like a token selection. But in which case, why should we waste a, a spot on him? I guess it may be some inspirational value. I guess that's what I can think of. Um, 
Hudbert and Singh, uh, I really hope he doesn't play too many T20s. Hmm. I think that's part of why he's gone down as a bowler. He kind of just... I think Vishen Singh Bedi said, the best <laughs> off-spinner for India is Virender Sewa because he actually plays the ball. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I think that... I think probably the stint in SX will probably help him. Yes, um, I agree. I agree with you. I, 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 I really hope he sticks with that. That's a T20 World Cup. I think India will do well... Hopefully, just because these are the pitches that suit them. They are really good at chasing on really um, lifeless wickets. So, like Hobart, they were very good there. They're very good. Um, whenever the whenever the ball isn't moving around at all, they tend to be able to be capable of anything. And then we realize, oh, this is why they can chase down any total and look amazing in certain conditions. And then, like, put them on a pitch like, say, I don't know, the Waka or... They struggled with the GABA um, during the CB series. And then you wonder, oh, how did this team win the World Cup? Now, so. Skanda, before I let you go, I'm going to ask you about sure. one more question. Because when I mentioned his name, Amanat's face completely lit up. And I'm talking about Piyush Chawla, his inclusion in the T20 sure. squad. What are your thoughts? Um, Piyush Chawla, I, so I don't think, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not totally sold on him. Uh, I, I think that he's... he's He's obviously still pretty young, right? Uh, when he debuted, he was a teenager. So yes, um, I, I think I, he's, a, he's not, the same age group as others. Rana, uh, Kohli, and all, all the other players. He's in the same age group as, as them. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't see him. But he's okay. He's got a. He kind of brings his arm up pretty high, so he has a, like a good googly. His leg break doesn't do much. Um, I'm not sure. It, it's, it, it's the only thing I wonder about is T20 and being a spin bowler. You got to be really consistent. That matters a lot more than kind of what you do off the pitch. And so that's why I say someone like Yuvraj can be really handy, limited over to bowler, um, because he's just so consistent. Well, um, Skanda, whereas Biyuf Chawla, he still has to be attacking. And I'm not sure it's the best selection for T20. I really do appreciate you calling us on the show and participating in our, in our discussions. Uh, this is, uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you listen to Skanda, who called us uh, from Dayton, New Jersey. Thank you so much, Skanda. Have a, fun, a fantastic weekend ahead. And keep watching yeah. cricket. Oh, yes, and thanks so much for taking my call. Take care. Yeah. That's impressive, right? For somebody who was born and brought up here, who's been following cricket extensively and can talk about all the things that we've been talking about, Amanath. Mm. So kudos to Skandawal. Amanath, uh, we'll quickly move on to uh, some of the did you knows. Okay. And then I really want to talk about England and South Africa and then we'll get right into the domestic cricket, Amanath. New Jersey cricket. Now, here are some of the did you knows. Did you know the record for most 50 plus scores in a single innings in ODIs is five? is held by Pakistan in the game against Zimbabwe in Karachi 2008. In one single innings? In one single innings. Uh, however, they did, they did not include a single century. Okay. But they did have 550-plus scores. 550, that. That, that's amazing. That's amazing, right? Matt, did you know Matthew Hayden's 23 centuries in 71 test wins is the highest number of hundreds by an opening batsman in victories? In victories, okay. Graham Smith and Gordon Greenwich are next with 16 and 14 centuries respectively. Okay. Amanat, somebody has also given you a challenge recently. Yes. Uh, uh, I was asked, how many, uh, when uh, Dravid scores a century, India rarely loses. Whereas, when Sachin scores a century, India still manages to lose. I know you're still working uh-huh. on it. It's, I'm working it's on work it. It's work in progress right and now. It's a work in progress. So, I'm trying to compute not just centuries. Whenever there have been big scores, whenever there have been big scores by Dravid, did it result in India at least saving the match? And what is the case for uh, Sachin? So, uh, hopefully in the next week I'll wait or for so. your report on that, Amanat. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll update you next week or so. Now, uh, previous weeks we have talked about West Indies and how they, they perform well in Jamaica and you know how I always uh, brag about mm-hmm. Kingston, Jamaica, uh, the stadium, the venue. Here's, here's a did you know for you. Did you know West Indies have won most number of home tests in Jamaica? 23 wins. 23 wins. Next on the list is Barbados. Uh, they've rarely lost in Barbados. Where West Indies have gone on to win 21 tests. But I'll tell you one thing. I don't think they have lost too many tests at Barbados. They may not have won many, but they have lost very few at Barbados. Another interesting fact about uh, Jamaica is uh, Jamaica also has the lowest draw percentage. 28% among West Indian venues that have hosted at least 10 matches. Wow. Uh, my result is almost a given. A result is almost a given. Okay. And this was, I especially brought it for you, Amanath. I know okay, you're a statistician. You love these numbers. Yes. Did you know 
with uh, Virat Kohli's fourth ODI against uh, century against uh, against Sri Lanka, Virat Kohli has become the first Indian batsman to register thousand ODI runs in a successive years. One thousand three hundred eighty-one runs in thirty-four matches in two thousand and eleven, and one thousand three runs in fifteen matches in two thousand and twelve so far for Virat Kohli. I think uh, he's on a ro- real roll. Absolutely, and also, did you know India notched up their four 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 uh, hundred. International victory, ODI. one day ODI victory when they when they uh, defeated Sri Lanka by six wickets in the fourth ODI of the five ODI matches series, and that took place at the R Premadasa Stadium in Colombo. Okay, I mean, these were some of the did you knows. Listeners can also read them on our blog fulltosscricket.com. Yes, friends, you are listening to Full Toss. This is your host Amit, along with. Avanat on Radio Dil online radiodil.com for iPhone downloads you can always download an application known as Radio Dil phone number in the studios is 732 800 1008 732 800 1008 is the phone number Avanat England and South Africa yes we hyped it up so much before even the series started and the and the hype has lived on uh, yes, I think it is lived up to the hype. Yeah, I should. Uh, that's what I wanted to say. Lived up to the hype. So the second test was a very close. Uh, was quite an interesting test match. Uh, thanks to KP's uh, Kevin Peterson's brilliant one forty nine. That's where I bring in KP again, Amanat. Uh, yes. What's been happening off field now? Off field, uh, he may, he dropped a bombshell after the thir- yes, uh, second test. Yes, yes. When yes. he said that probably the Lord's test might be the last test he plays for England because of things happening with the English cricket board and what is happening in the dressing room and he has been taking objections to uh, uh, the tweets happening uh, m- making fun of him plus he is demanded from the English cricket board that he be allowed to play an entire IPL season uh, and it's quite, it's quite interesting how it's going to work out general English media is very much against Kevin Peterson it has been. Uh, they have. I mean, I mean, it, it is very evident for last few years that we have known, especially after his uh, captaincy after two thousand and eight. I, but it is unfortunate. Uh, I think they have not forgiven him for being South African. And, uh, and I, with I an was attitude. expecting you to say that <laughs> uh, for being a South African with an attitude. I don't know why I had a feeling that you would be saying that. <laughs> he, he, he's a South African with an attitude, and so that's why the English media don't like that. Well, the English media they don't like anybody. Yes, no, but Strauss is a South African himself. Yes, he but is. He, but he's not that controversial. He doesn't stir the pot, whereas Kevin Peterson stirs the pot. <laughs> Let's see what happens with Kevin Peterson, Amanat. Because I hope they come to some kind of compromise. It would be a terrible shame if he is forced to retire from uh, all forms of cricket and just to IPL. Because t- uh, test matches, uh, uh, he's one of the most exciting players. Be especially it. after his performance in the second test, Amanat. I think uh, it's unfortunate to not to, uh, you know... The, the way the South Africans were baiting him and the way he was hitting back at them... I think Donald had the best uh, comment. He said it was like uh, seeing a right-handed Lara. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. Okay. I think he does add a lot of excitement to the game. He brings in a lot of uh, aspects to the game. I mean, I think it's, it's wonderful to see him play the way he plays. Some of his short selections and just the way he handles some of the ballers. Uh, so it will be really unfortunate if, if that were to happen to him. Um, yes. So we'll wait and see how things sh- uh, take uh, uh, things take place in the, uh, versus South Africa and England. Amanad, we'll move on to our domestic cricket now. Go ahead. It's it's about time we talked about them. They deserve all first, the support. First half we could not cover them as I promised we will cover them, but here no, nevertheless, here's what I have now. Go ahead. Uh, we'll talk. We'll first talk about the CLNJ League. That okay. is the Cricket League of New Jersey. Now here are some of the matches that are happening today, Amanad. The Legion's Cricket Club uh, Cricket Club will be playing Incredible's Cricket Club at um, at. Their, at the match already started at 11 a.m. Essex Eagles versus the CLNJ Colts at Johnson's Park. That's a Division Three match. And uh, Homedale Cricket Club, they'll be facing South Gujarat Cricket Club. Western Road uh, Cricket Pitch Number 1. That's Division 1, Amanat. And now, I really wanted to talk about this one particular match okay. for this league from last week. Okay. And uh, this, is the, this was the match between the Middlesex and the Newark Cricket Club. Both are very good teams. Both are very good teams and very colorful characters, uh, players in that team, Amanat. Okay. And this is how the this is how things shaped up in that in that match. By the way, Middlesex won that match. Okay. They defeated Newark uh, Cricket Club in twenty five. This was a twenty five over ma- uh, match uh, where in uh, where uh, Middlesex scored one hundred and seventy eight. One seventy eight. One seventy eight with uh, 
Heather Ali, uh, 44, and Kashif Habib, who scored a brilliant 51 okay. in this innings. And here comes uh, Newark to bat, and uh, they could not sustain. In uh, 19.1 overs, 116. 116. 116. And uh, Kashif Habib was uh, rightly so man of the match along with Adnan Naseem uh, for this match, Amanath. And uh, they had a superb all-round performance, Middlesex Cricket Club, Amanath. Not only with the bat, but also with the bowl, they performed brilliantly. Uh, so Middlesex Cricket Club sounds like MCC. MCC, yes, indeed. I, I knew you were going to say that, Amanath. And some of, some of the wickets have taken Mustafa, Mustafa Khan has uh, Yes, I know taken, Mustafa very well <laughs> He's taken three wickets uh, in four overs uh, After giving up 19 runs He's been on a roll this season <laughs> Yes, indeed, sir He has been, he has been And it, as I said, it was an all-round all performance Urvish Patel has taken two wickets uh, Vishal Jariwala has taken two wickets Also, a wicket for Anas Sufi And a wicket for Aslam Khan Okay uh, As far as uh, Newark Cricket Club is concerned It's also a pretty solid team Yes, they have pretty good performances uh, uh, for this team I also. But at that particular day, it was all about Middlesex Amanath. Yes, I thought they they performed brilliantly and and took their team uh, to a victory. And uh, now I'll move on to the Millennium Cricket Club. Okay, Millennium Cricket League. Uh, league, yes, indeed, sir. And here are here are some of the matches that are being played today. Okay. Uh, for for this league, Dragon versus Warriors. Okay. They'll be playing at the Mercer County Park. Okay. And uh, the match already started at 11 o'clock. Also, Newark will be facing Euphoria at the Branchbrook Park. Okay. Match started at 11. And then you have Indians versus the Indus Cricket Club. You talked okay. about Indus. I think yes. you saw one of their matches. I, I, I see them. They'll be playing in North Brunswick. In fact, you can see that you can uh, get back, the tail I'll, end. On my way back, I'll stop by, usually. Leisure, uh, Leisure Cricket Club will be facing CFC at the Thomas Jefferson Cricket Club. At, 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 at Knock at the ground. Uh, so here are some of the matches that are happening today for Millennium League. And now, uh, some of the, uh, this is one of the match that, uh, matches that took place last week, Amanath. Okay. And this was a thriller. It was a nail-biter. Okay. That this, was plays, play, this was played between the Stumper, uh, Stumper Z. Remember we talked about Stumper, Stumper Z? Z a few weeks ago? Yes. Uh, they faced uh, the Crick Max, uh, Rutgers. Okay. And Rutgers won this match by one run, Amanath. One run? Oh, it can't be closer than that. Uh, this, this, uh, sorry, one wicket. Not one, one wicket. Run, one okay. wicket. I mean, that is very close. And it was, it was indeed a pretty exciting match. This match was played at Hatfield in Pennsylvania. Hatfield, Pennsylvania. I remember talking about this match last week also before yes. they, when they started playing. And here's a scorecard. In, in 27.2 overs, uh, Stumper Z scored 115 mm. at 4.23 runs per over. And top scorer in this one was, in this innings was uh, Krushit Patel who scored 46, 20 for uh, Mehul Patel Amanath. And rest of everybody else was in the single digits except Himanshu Desai who scored 11. 115 is what uh, uh, Stumper Z scored. Uh, in, in this innings, you have uh, um, three wickets for uh, Parthiv Mehta for Rutgers. He has taken that. Two wickets for uh, Dipesh Patel, uh, two wickets for Amar Shah, two wickets for uh, Riaz Karim, and a wicket for Akshay Patel. Okay. Now, here's Rutgers. Okay. Chasing a score of 116, Amanath. 116. Parthiv Mehta scored 10. Amar Shah, 9. Riaz Karim, 1, 19 for Chintan Thakkar, 26 for Jignesh Patel, 1 for Dipesh Patel, Arpit Shah, 1, 0 for Dhruv Kaur, 8 for Abhay uh, uh, Rishinghani. Now, you must be thinking, now, how, how did they win this game? It became very exciting towards the end of the game, Amanath, when they were still uh, taking the scorecard. Akshay Patel and Mohit Patel. It was Mohit Patel who, who, uh, who, who uh, took Rutgers to a victory. Of the last pair. Last pair. Last pair. It was indeed an exciting match. Okay. I wish we were there to watch it. Yes. Nevertheless, we're talking about it right now. That's nice. So uh, uh, we need to uh, support our, our local cricketers with all the um, scorecards and uh, publicity they deserve. Indeed, sir. And uh, Amanath, I know you also have uh, uh, something to talk about for NJS BCL, which is a New Jersey softball cricket league. Amanath. Yes. Uh, they they may not play with full fledged equipment, but in terms of heart and passion, they are. Oh, I've seen them play. I have seen them play. Uh, I, I, I've seen them play many times. In fact, I used to play for this league in the past. Yes. So yeah, here it goes. The who who's leading the points table in the NJSBCL? The Legends team is leading. Oh, they're they're, they're a very good team. They are leading with. Uh, they played fifteen matches and they won twelve. The Tom's River uh, 11, they're also, they've played 15 matches, one twelve. So they're tied for the fir uh, 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 first position. First, uh, and the next two teams are um, Mahasi. Hey, that's my old team. 
Mass play from Mass They won 11 matches out of 15. And New Jersey Stars Cricket Club, they won 11 out of 15. But they have a very good net run rate. Net, net run rate, I'm sure, comes into play in the final position. Yes, indeed. So those are the top four positions. And now, if you look at today's matches, what is uh, go, going on? One is uh, GP Rec Cricket Club versus Team Highlanders. The second match which, is, uh, uh, which went, uh, was Spartans versus Blue Aces Cricket Club. Third was the Jersey Boys. I like the term. Jersey Boys versus Atlantic Cricket Club. And the uh, fourth game was the uh, Village Point CC versus Shaheen Cricket Club. Now, there is also a team called De Gumake. I don't know which league they belong to. I, have, I, have, I remember reading about yes, it. Yes, uh, De Gumake is playing Crickholics. Yeah, De Gumake. They and play for NJPCL, right? Yeah, and they're playing a team called Crickholics. Crickholics. Uh, that is very nice, like, uh, like alcoholics. Very, very, very creative names, huh? Very creative names. That's what I said. They've got passion. NJSBCL has got passion. And that makes a big difference uh, in bringing awareness of the game. And it, they play with a lot of uh, fire on the ground. Well, uh, in, in coming week shows, Avinash will definitely have some representation from this league also. And I've spoken with Avinash Gaze and yes. Ranjit, who is a PRO. Ranjit is a PRO. We'll, we'll definitely have invited them to come to the studios. And also another league that uh, we're working with to uh, get their stats as well is uh, uh, the New Jersey Cricket and Empires Association yes. Cricket League. That's uh, that's. Uh, uh, headed by Deepak Kate. Deepak Kate. We intend covering as many leagues as possible from the <laughs> tri-state area. We want to give them uh, all the uh, coverage uh, necessary. Now, Manad, these are some of the teams from New Jersey, but I also request our listeners mm. who uh, listen to us not only in Jersey, but across the United States. If you know any teams in your community, mm. any leagues that you know of, uh, please let us know. You send us an email at info at fulltosscricket.com. And uh, if you send us the link, the web pages. We'll be only too glad to read it and talk to somebody and be, uh, become familiar with the, their leagues. There are so many cricket leagues happening in New Jersey. We want to give an outlet for all of them here. I know there are plenty of teams that, that play in New York region also, especially Queens and Bronx, yes, Brooklyn absolutely. area. Uh, our next goal would be to reach out to them, Amanath. Yes. And we are working on that right now already. Yes. So uh, we definitely want to make sure that this community grows even bigger and bigger so we can talk more and more about them. Sure. Friends, Amanat, unfortunately, that's all the time we had left for today. Okay. Friends, you were listening to Full Toss with Amanat and Amit on Radio Dil, online, radiodil.com for iPhone downloads, the application known as Radio Dil. You can also listen to us on your regular phones. Dial in the number 408-418-5000 for Android phones, application known as Tune Radio. Phone number in the studio is 732-800-1008. Aap sunre radio dil. Dil se. Dil tak. Amanat, I also want to give out a few shout-outs. Go ahead. I have a few shout-outs and there will be listeners who are listening to us from India, New Delhi. Okay. Sanjeev Khanduja. Sanjeev Khanduja. Sanjeev Thank Khanduja. You. Vikram Kaushik. And another important name that I really wanted to mention this name is Manu Kaushik. Very good. Wasan Kunj, New Delhi. Very good. Manu along with Sanjeev and I visited India last time for the World Cup's uh, uh, matches. Uh, he has taken me around. You know, he's uh, uh, the very next day we went to uh, the Kotla. Very nice. It was absolutely, indeed, a, a phenomenal experience. I call him Dilik Ajuba. Oh, very good. Manu Kaushik. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out uh, to Mahesh Sahasranam. Uh, he was the one who got me interested in the statistic which you had mentioned. Yes, yes, the the one who challenged you. What's his uh, name? Uh, uh, his name is Mahesh. 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 He wanted me to the analysis between Dravid well, and Mahesh, Sachin. Mahesh, you put Amanat to work. It's oh. good to see him because I I, I I love reading his reports. And when especially when, when somebody gives him a challenge like that, he'll go nuts. He'll go nuts about that. Okay. And so thank you so much, friends, for staying with us, uh, giving us your support for so long. And as always, you can follow us on uh, YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel that is known as? Full Toss Cricket. Some of the shows, especially today's show, Amanat, I will work on it and he'll get that show on. By tonight, we'll, ha we'll have it posted. Indeed, but we also have our previous shows. All the shows uh, will be available on YouTube as long as YouTube exists. Indeed, sir. And listeners can also send us, uh, we're also on Twitter with the tagline. Full, full Toss. Full Toss Cricket. Full -toss. Well, friends, thank you so much for staying with us and giving us your support for so long. But above all, Amanat, I want to thank you for your expertise, your knowledge, your experience you bring to this table. It makes it absolutely much more interesting. It's always a privilege and pleasure to talk to an audience. Another match, uh, interesting match that is happening tomorrow before I sign off, Amanat, is Edison Cricket Club will be facing the Warriors at the Thomas Jefferson Park tomorrow. Oh, that will be a very interesting game. That's, that's going to be a very interesting game. So stay tuned uh, for more programming on Radio Dil. We'll be back here next 
Saturday afternoon, same time, 2 to 3. Till then, everybody, have a fantastic day.